Hi, I'm Ewan Elric, and this is my presentation on healthy living and body management for a musical theatre performer. Um, so a big part about um, being a musical theatre performer is a healthy diet. So to keep healthy, you need to have uh, these three main sections, really. So you have fats, which uh, so obviously you need healthy fats instead of unhealthy fats. So just keep away from things like chips and processed oils if you can. Uh, healthy fats include are in things like avocados, nuts, olive oil. Um, obviously, you don't want too many fats. So if you have too many fats, you could uh, lead to, it, this could lead to an unhealthy weight or decreased agility, which could ruin your uh, performance. Uh, another big part is carbohydrates. These provide energy, so things like potatoes, pastas, and breads um, are really good for carbohydrates. These will provide a lot of energy for the body whilst you're performing. Once again, too many of these, and you could end up uh, losing your agility or breath, or in some cases get diabetes due to the carbohydrates being broken down into fat. Um, finally, a big one is protein, because protein helps with muscle, mu with muscle growth and muscle repairs. So um, when you're doing lifts and when you're doing lifting objects and stuff, this is major that you have a good muscular structure. Some people need a higher muscular structure due to that's the character that they usually get cast in. Other people are going to need less to have a more slender body. Uh, next slide. Uh, and then obviously a big thing is calorie intake. Um, so obviously you need a high calorie diet in order to maintain energy on stage. Um, but you're not going to want to have like too many calories. And a big problem with this it, is it can often lead to major um, eating disorders such as anorexia. You have um, bulimia is a is an uh, is a common one in um, musical performing. Uh, due to uh, people watching their weight, so they'll usually end up trying to maintain their weight and therefore sometimes been due to stress or um, not eat enough due to trying to keep their weight down. Um, mm -hmm. Then I got some quotes from Broadway performers who are obviously more equipped to talk about this than me. Um, <laughs> so here's uh, one from Rachel Zakoff, who's been in, been in the room since Phantom of the Opera. Again, avocados for those healthy fats, uh, high calorie diets, all the important stuff. Um, then this uh, Eloise over here went into more detail. Uh, so she talks about having her carbohydrates here, gets proteins from eggs, also fats from eggs. And uh, with bananas, you get vitamins, you get um, uh, potassium. Yeah, vitamins, basically. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, confused. Blank a little bit. Uh, yeah. And then there's also. Obviously, you don't need to entirely keep to this diet, but peanut butter is a good for you. Oreos, obviously, not so much, but snacks aren't going to ruin your performance as long as you keep them in moderation. <coughs> um, so there's uh, also foods that you should really try to avoid um, close to a show. So obviously, these are okay in general life. So if you're going about your day to day, you don't have a performance coming up. These should be fine. When you're getting close to a performance, you're going to want to avoid dairy because when you swallow dairy, a lot of the a lot of this sticks to your mucus in your throat, and therefore you uh, can't really flex your vocal cords. You'll have a reduced range. Um, processed sugars, same kind of problem. Also, you're going to have a burst of energy then, and then you're just going to crash. And if that happens during your performance you could ruin an entire performance. Chocolate has both processed sugars and dairy. You just want to avoid chocolate, really. It's not good. 
Um, and then overly hot or overly cold drinks can strain your vocal cords because mm -hmm. that's what hot cold stuff do. <coughs> um, a large part of vocal performing is using your voice. Um, it's therefore important that you keep your throat and lungs protected so that you can keep singing at such a high standard. A big thing to uh, know about this is the vocal warm-up, so this is to protect your vocal range and keep it high. So a great test is known as the siren technique in which you have to start at the lowest point of your vocal range, go to the top and then back down, so it kind of sounds like a siren. Three, three, four, okay. Uh, then there's obviously body protection. This is... Um, Keeping your body agile and flexible so that you don't cramp up and you don't, your muscles don't tense and you can do all the movements and the dances and stuff. And a great example of this that they use in many musical theatre schools is Pilates. So now we're just going to do, just going to do a few Pilates now if you want to come into the area. Pilates zone. <laughs> Again, we're going to start with one. Don't remember the name. The name doesn't matter. Yeah. Uh, we're gonna go into I think it's like a donkey or something. Horse maybe. Just into this position. Fairly simple. And then just lift the leg and hold that for like five, four, three, two, one. Nice. Now hold that. If your knee is, if your leg is bent. Uh, I think it's maybe bent. <laughs> so five, four, three, two. One, you should be able to feel it stretch. So it's always the tips. Uh, okay, now just lie down on the back. This one looks really difficult. So, that's, uh, so you're gonna well, lift your head. Yeah, yeah, I gave him a bit. You're gonna lift your head and your legs like this. Keep that for like 10, 9, 8, 7, 6, 5, 4, 3, 2, 1. This thing is fun. Okay, um, then another big thing is keeping a healthy mind, which isn't something many uh, musical theatre performers think about. A lot of people focus on the body and forget about the stress leading to depression, anxiety, things like that. So, um, Josh Turkner, who is the head of Cognitive Enhancement of Nourish Balance, said that keeping a steady routine is very important to maintaining a, a high energy and being well rested because obviously when our ancestors had their own daily rhythms, so it's just natural for us to wake up at the same time, fall asleep at the same time, things like that. Another big thing is dealing with rejection, because there's a lot of rejection in the music industry. I've been rejected from multiple shows, especially like larger parts, but I've also quit too because of my dancing abilities. Not first. Um, so some good ways to deal with this are to try and get feedback of reasons you've been rejected, like dancing. Um, <laughs> whether the reason you've been rejected is trying to understand it, improve on it so that you can go back a later day or go to other places, show that you've improved. Then you're gonna need a lot of self-belief. It's gonna be a lot of failure. And then there's gonna be a lot of trying to pick yourself back up, go back out there and apply for as many music courses as you can so that you get more you build a repertoire, you keep a range of uh, options open, whether it's comedy, drama, make sure you can cover as many bases as you can. <coughs> oh, dancing, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> dancing is a difficult and strenuous aspect of being a performer, especially for some performers, me. Uh, so uh, so you, um, when you're dancing, it involves a lot of training and hours spent, as I did for Greece, which I managed to do at a fairly good level, as well as uh, from, um, how to succeed in business, where I had to learn some very complicated dances, and I managed to get through it. 
Um, so especially for me in this, a large aspect of the dancing is the acting. So both times I've played a fairly clumsy character, so I can use the fact that I can dance very well and the fact that my acting is better than my dancing to try and kind of internalize the fact that I can dance very well and use it in my performance. Uh, so obviously using facial expressions, vocal expressions, things like that. Uh, but then obviously this is going to cause a strain on the performance mental health again due to like a lot of pressure to have this done and to be at a good level in your acting, a good level in dancing, ready to go on stage. So having good direction and uh, enough training with a professional can really help in that. Yeah. <coughs> Do a little quiz. Keep it fancy. Um, so it's my healthy eating quiz. So here's A, uh, person A. He does little. Uh, he eats little but healthy food every day and often skips meals in order to try and keep his form. Person B here has large meals but they consist of things like nuts, chicken, and rice and he never skips a meal just to keep his energy up. Anyone know which one is going to perform better on a stage? B. B. Oh. Yeah. Yes, B. B is green. That means they are right. Um, if you go forward again, I'm out of reason. Cool. So, B has a healthy, uh, balanced diet. They're unlikely to go hungry, and then they're going to keep energy on stage. A is going to be hungrier, more likely to snack, and if not snack, have a higher chance of forming anorexia due to the stress and they'll most likely have lower energy on stage. Another one, this person stretches before performance and cools down after, practices often. This person relaxes before performance just to be mentally prepared, practices rarely in order not to stress themselves out too much. A. Hey. A. A. A is going to be agile and not going to stretch the muscle, whereas B is going to probably be less ready to act on stage might pull a muscle, might get injured. Uh, a is going to have their dance applied to muscle memory, which I'm not sure if I've mentioned. Mention it now. Muscle memory is where it's kind of like your dances um, come to you more naturally. You can hear a song and know which dance moves you're going to do because of how many times you practice it. It's uh, imprinted in your memory. B dance is probably not going to be in their muscle memories, and so their lines, what's it? Dancing might be shaky or delivered incorrectly. Who knows? That's okay. Thank you. Okay. Any questions for you? And any questions about healthy, uh, maintaining healthy mental <coughs> and how uh, um, mental approach or healthy body approach um, to being a musical theatre person? Yes, George. Does your um, lifestyle and diet, is it going to vary if you're more likely to be a dancer as opposed to a singer or actor? Um, I mean, in musical theatre, there's a good mix of both. Obviously, there are larger people in musical theatre who are probably going to eat more to keep their energy up. If you're going to be a dancer, or uh, if you're going to be a dancer, you're probably going to eat more. If you're going to be an actor, you probably... Oh, wait, if you're going to be a dancer or actor, you're probably going to eat more than if you're going to be a singer. Because singers don't have to move around as much. They can kind of make, uh, they can store their energy more. Um, are there any other lifestyle <coughs> factors other than what you eat that can have an impact on your performance? Um, so obviously there's the um, natural disposition is going to play a part. So whether you're already disabled and or have like uh, already have some kind of mental disability, something that's going to affect your performance, such as maybe anxieties so might affect how you move, things like that. Well, um, you know, smoking is going to play a big part if you smoke, if you're addicted to nicotine, your lungs are uh, usually, what's it called, secreted in uh, black tar, yeah. which really affects the um, your singing abilities. Mm, yeah. <coughs> Any other questions? Thank you. Very That's much. good. Thank you, Ed.